Michigan has a strict policy when it comes to drug enforcement. Three types of crimes are associated with drugs. Possession, possession with intent to deliver, and unlicensed manufacturer. Currently, there are five categories or schedules of controlled substances. The first schedule are substances that have a high potential for abuse and no accepted medical application. Heroin and ecstasy fall into this category, and in Michigan, so does marijuana. The second schedule consists of substances which have an accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Abuse of these substances may lead to severe psychic or physical dependence. Examples include cocaine and OxyContin. The third schedule are substances with a potential for abuse that is less than Schedule 1 or 2 and are also accepted for medical use. The abuse may lead to moderate or low physical dependence or high psychic dependence. Vicodin, which must be administered under a doctor's care, is an example of this schedule. The fourth schedule are drugs such as Valium and other antidepressant type substances. There is a low potential for abuse, they are accepted for medical use, and the abuse may lead to limited psychic or physical dependence. Finally, in Schedule 5 are substances that have a potential for abuse and dependence lower than other schedules, but are still considered dangerous. Codeine in concentration of less than 10 milligrams is cited as an example. The function of the Drug Analysis Unit is to determine if the substances found in an individual's possession fall within one of these schedules. To ensure accuracy, identification follows a rigid procedure. Two independent analyses must concur before the final identification is rendered. The first step is the screening test. Many times these preliminary tests can be done in the field. Just looking at the evidence may give clues to its identity. Marijuana, for example, has characteristics that can be seen and smelled. Some illegal drugs, known as club drugs, have distinctive markings. These are examples of ecstasy tablets. A second type of screening analysis is to mix a sample of the substance with a chemical solution and observe a color change. In this example, the blue color suggests the presence of cocaine. The next step is called the selective test. This test may confirm the results of the preliminary test. Examining for crystals under a microscope is one example of a selective test. A specimen of the evidence is mixed with heavy metal salts and viewed under the microscope. Certain substances form a distinctive crystal. Here's the crystal for cocaine. Notice the distinctive K shape. It's known as the feathery K and is unique for cocaine. This is the crystal for heroin. Another example of the selective test is to look for manufacturer's markings on tablets and identify them by referring to physician manuals like the physician desk reference or in pharmaceutical literature. This area of the lab is where the last doubt of a substance's identity is removed. Here, the third series of tests in the protocol, the confirming tests, are performed. The drug analysis examiner has two instruments available which can be used for either confirming or selective examinations. One instrument is the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, GCMS. The gas chromatograph separates the evidence into components which include any drugs. The components are delivered to the mass spectrometer where a stream of electrons bombards the molecules and fragments them. The time and quantity of this breakup is recorded in the form of a graph. Every substance has a distinctive fragmentation pattern or spectrum. The graph is compared to the database of known substances and identification is made. Here's the graph for cocaine. And this is the one for heroin. Not only does the instrument identify whether the evidence in question is in the group of controlled substances, it also provides an exact identification of the total composition of the specimen. Most illegal substances are mixed with a variety of diluting or cutting agents such as sugar or caffeine which either weaken the purity or mask its detection. To use the second instrument in the confirming protocol requires chemical cutting agents to extract the pure drug. 
Once the pure drug is obtained, the test is performed using a device called the FTIR instrument, which stands for Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrophotometer. The FTIR performs the analysis by shining infrared light through the specimen. Some of the light spectrum will be absorbed and the rest will be transmitted. The instrument creates a graph of the process. Again, each substance creates a unique graph. When compared to a reference graph, a positive identification can be made. When there is a potential loss of freedom due to substance possession, the drug analysis unit is committed to using thorough and exacting tests and procedures to ensure the evidence is on the list that Michigan has declared illegal.